Please take a number and sit down. There's nobody else here. Please take a number and sit down. Uh, just rest in my feet. Number two. Now serving number two. Welcome to the Rehabilitation Centre. Actually, I'm just a sort of undercover bridge inspector from Central. See this device? Uh, it detects structural... It... Then you should have no trouble passing the test, should you? Please head through the door there and begin your rehabilitation. Deposit your personal belongings into this box, retaining only your clothes. Please continue to the decontamination room. Now, if I was Percy, I'd just go promenading about, wondering why everyone was staring. I never did quite grasp what's so important about wearing clothes. Please discard your clothes. Don't worry, you will be provided with new, proper clothes after decontamination. Please proceed to the next room and obtain fresh, new, proper, clean clothes. I hope she's not watching and judging. Don't you look wonderful? Please proceed to the next room. In case there is any residual odour of the Garden District on you, please enjoy this refreshing scent of country flowers. Is that licorice? Why licorice? Get ready for the most important moment in your rehabilitation. Please take your favourite flavour of joy. Vanilla, chocolate or strawberry. Oh, I must insist that you not traverse the beams of the joy detector without taking your joy, sir. Oh, damn it! They were serious about taking my joy, weren't they? Take these all the time, and I wouldn't have any worries. Please head into the theatre and take a seat. Excellent. 
Ireland. Sit tight and enjoy the show. And now it's time for the Uncle Jack Etiquette Minute. You may be wondering, how can I fit in better in Hamlin Village? Well, it's easy. To get along, go along. If someone tells you it's a lovely day, agree with them. <laughs> because of course, it's always a lovely day in Hamlin Village. So don't be afraid of talking to people first. They'll appreciate it. Now, I'm assuming, of course, that you're decently dressed. Eh? Clothes make the man, eh? Indeed, naked people have almost no influence at all in society. <laughs> and don't dress in rags either, or people might think you're a wastrel. Now, what should you do if people are staring at you? Maybe they're asking you if you remember to take your joy. Who cares? Just pop another and they'll congratulate you and go on about their day. And if things seem to be getting a bit hectic, remember, you can always sit on a bench, relax and open the Hamlin or Quran. Take a load off. No one will bother you when you're sitting on a bench. Unless you've made them very angry. <laughs> or, I don't know, watch Jack Worthing on television. He's very good. <laughs> well, I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. Tune in tomorrow for another Etiquette Minute with Jack Worthing. That's me. Isn't Uncle Jack wonderful? Now, please proceed to the third floor, where you will be tested on what you've just relearned. Just a friendly reminder. Uncle Jack don't mention it. But a word to the wise, proper decent people don't like people what is running, jumping, crouching, spying, sneaking, breaking or entering. Such like behaviours is what we associate with downers. Avoid them and we shan't have disagreements. Or 
your jump about. No need to be in a hurry in Hamlin Village. We want you to try to pay attention. We want you to succeed. Mrs. Sackville, your question please. If you want to make friends with me, should you A. Give me flowers. B. Talk about old times. C. Stop staring at me. Why is everything staring? Excellent! Yes! Do give the ladies a lovely bouquet. They do so love flowers. Oh dear, it looks like the eyes have you both, as they say. How disappointing. Remember, doctors are here to help you. If you've forgotten your joy, doctors will smell it right away. And they'll give you a quick injection to make your day a lovely one. Dr. Byron, what is your question? What happens when you take too much joy? A. You can't find your own house. B. Who cares? C. Please God, make them stop staring. That's right. Clear one. It hardly matters. You might lose a few hours. But sooner or later, you'll find yourself on a bench, no worse for the wear. Oh, clear two. Today is just not your day, is it? But you can always come back for a seventh try. And that concludes this episode of Oh Behave. I hope you made it to the village. If you didn't, remember, we're always happy to give you another shot if you're willing to behave like a decent citizen. Of course we are. Here in Hamlin Village, we're always happy. Well, that's a relief. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time to play Oh Behave, the game where you show that you're ready to come back to Hamlin Village and behave like a proper, decent citizen. What the hell? I passed the test. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm not going to do this again. How do I get out of here? Are you ready to behave? Now, our five guest questioners are going to ask you one question each. All you have to do is show us that you understand how to behave yourself in Wellington Wells. Mr. Cashier, what question do you have for our prodigal son or daughter? If you want to fit in, you should. A. Say hello to everyone you meet, like what you do. B. Visit people's houses, whether they're there or not. C. The eyes! The eyes! I just want you to meditate on that essential fact of our existence. I just want you to meditate on that. May I express my delight that you passed the examination, sir? We've not had as many as we'd hoped, sir. Not as many at all. And yet, they say the unexamined life is not worth living well sir welcome back oh and in case your rustication has been of long duration please bear in mind there is now a nocturnal curfew best be indoors after nightfall sir So 
from here, I've got to get to St. George's home and then into the parade. Except that I need a letter of transit to get into the parade, like the one I left on my desk in the parade. How do I get a new one? Wait, the old government printing office was on Maiden Home. Maybe I can break in and steal some blanks. I think this might be the one Sally and me tried to blow up. I always wonder what happened to the letters. There was an awful lot of smoke. Looks like the old printing office is pretty well buttoned up. I wonder if there's a way in the back. You know what? <laughs> Never mind. Next week? Arthur? Arthur Hastings! Lovely day for it. Don't you lovely day for it, me, you idiot? It's me! Sally! Oh, I knew it was you. I mean, the glasses, the hair, the really adorable jacket. Don't ask me how, you're not that awkward little boy anymore, are you? But... The way you walk, it's, it's like the mask isn't even there. I just, I just knew. There's Arthur. Sally? You look fantastic. This ancient thing. I've had it two weeks. I'm out of my mind with boredom. Green and white checked. Your dress, the last time I saw you. Running out the door. <laughs> oh, that horrible gingham dress. Oh, God, that takes you back. <sighs> You're off your joy. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, ye of little fucking faith. I'm not going to turn you in. Whatever possesses you to go off your joy? <sighs> Percy. Oh, God. I saw a picture of him. I promised I'd look after him in Germany. I have to go and find him. How are you going to get out? Do you even have a letter of transit? Absolutely. On my desk in the city. <sighs> Good Christ. Just tell the policeman that. I'm sure they'll wave your right on through. Yeah, haven't figured that bit out yet. I'm very close with General Bing. Of course you are. No. <laughs> you always did have a knack for making helpful new friends. I mean, I could go see him and ask him to give you a letter of transit. Don't put the General out on my account. I'm sure you've only so many favours you can ask of him. My God. You still hate me, don't you? Yeah, well, I've only been wondering for the past 14 years. We were 16! How could you? Because I liked him. Because he had that adorable beard. I don't know, there isn't a reason for everything. You're the last bloody person who should be off his joy. I can't believe you are. Believe me. Take enough... stuff. Look. Some downer broke into my lab last week, literally tore the bars off the windows, and the ridiculous thing is I forgot to lock the front door. Point is, it's a horrible, terrible world out there. I just don't see you smashing your way into the city without a great deal of help. Oh no, not me. 
I'm living on the King's Road right now. Of course you are. I couldn't exactly have stayed there, could I? Like nothing happened. <sighs> Look. I'm sorry. This isn't what I meant to... Maybe we could help each other. Maybe I could come by when I'm feeling... Better? Brilliant. You ass. How about going to the King's Road, knocking on her door and apologising grievously? And asking nicely for a letter of transit. She knows General Bing. Damn it, lads! She's scarper! Oh! But what have we here? A friend of Miss Boyle's, innit? Funny! You don't seem all high and mighty. Perhaps we can express our feelings about Miss Boyle to her friend. Oh, you did it! <laughs> I can't deny it! Now, now, what's all the scuffle? You've been having an altercation in the alley? Uh, nothing you need to worry about, Constable. I'll, uh, just be on my way. And where is it you're on your way to? Precisely. Just off to see an old friend on St George. Oh, well... No need to be in such a hurry. The bridge to St George is, uh, under renovations. Oh, for how long? I hesitate to prognosticate, sir. Dr Faraday's the only one who knows how to fix the uh, ridiculous contraptions on them bridges. Word has been sent, but we've not had the courtesy of a reply. Why don't you, uh, I don't know, uh, go to Dr Faraday's house? Because Dr. F has removed to a secret location, the, uh, location which headquarters keeps, uh, uh, secret. All right. I'll ask your headquarters then. You some kind of troublemaker. Stay out of city business. I suppose if I want to go and make up with Sally, I need to get Dr. Faraday to come fix his bridge. So I need to visit police headquarters and find out where he's gone. Not risky at all. It's always a little extra complicated with Sally, isn't it? What's going on there? The Bobbies won't like it if I get too close to that. Unless I look like a council worker, I suppose. Attempting to locate Dr. Faraday. Uh, can you tell me where I can find him? I'm afraid that information is not for public consumption, sir. I could tell him where to find Bobby Hickenbotham, though. Oh, for heaven's sake. He's not in a reform club again, is he? He was supposed to go to Lud's own. Well, apparently he feels so guilty that Dr. F has been deprived of the liberties which are the birthright of every English citizen, he's gonna get his arse spanked. Constable Bevan, I'm not the public. I'm from the Department of Archives, Printing and Recycling. We're conducting an investigation into Dr. Faraday's handling of municipal records relating to the maintenance of the inter-insular bridges. Two requests have already been sent by Miss Bing to your superior requesting this information. If I have to go back to the parade, Miss Bing's next letter regarding this apparently deliberate festinence will include the name of the last person I talked to. Will that be you, Constable, or the chap who keeps the constabulary's address book? In that case, sir, why don't you take the elevator on up to records? They'll sort you out. Thank you. I shall. What the hell is festinence? 
They deprived Lord Faraday of his liberties, but he made all the bridges. Percival Hastings, is it not? N no, it's Arthur. Percival went away. Odd. There are some things you think you'll never forget. But then I suppose you do. I'm Arthur. Arthur Hastings. Memories play tricks on you, do they not? Lovely day for it. Right as rain. Right as rain. Hello? Constable Bevan said you're the chap who has Dr. Faraday's current address. Uh, uh, that's right. I've got records of everyone's address back there. All alphabetical. I'm quite proud of it. So, where is Dr. Faraday relocated to? Oh, uh, I can't tell you that. You're not a constable. <laughs> I guess it would take two of you to make one constable, if you had platform shoes. <laughs> right. Anyone else you'd like me to not tell you the address of? You're very helpful. That's what everyone says. You know, I used to patrol the street. It was lovely. Shopkeepers give you sandwiches, ladies flirt, the warm sun on your coat. One misstep and they put you in the records room. It's hardly fair. He was breathing when I left him.
they're alphabetical, maybe I can find Dr. F's address myself. F for Faraday. Aha! Uh -huh. He certainly does have this place organized. Dr. Faraday's in Lud's home. That's crazy. Why? And how do I get to Lud's home? Are they renovating it? What's all that about Bobby Hicken, both of them? He's supposed to check up on Dr. Faraday, but he's at the Reform Club instead, getting his ass spanked. Hmm. He must have some sort of ID that lets him cross to Lud's hole. Maybe I could borrow it. He doesn't remember the Nothing victory. to see here. Past is history. Now, now, mind your own business. Reform Club. This is where that chap is supposed to be getting spanked, isn't it? The one with the credentials for crossing the bridge to Lud's Hall. I wonder if I can borrow his paperwork while he's busy being punished. Guys, well, I suppose there are more lingering ways to go. <laughs> Still a bit sloshy. Good place for giant octopi. Out of the street and find a telly to watch. This game is so much more fun. 
Now, if I can find the switch again, I'm in business. to get here. Dinner. All right. Do you remember when we used to sing? Um, hello? Hello. Please hold your invitation up to the camera. Um, I don't exactly have uh, an invitation as such. Just a healthy curiosity. It's a private club. You must have an invitation.
presentation up to the camera. Oh yes, that's lovely. Do come in. More of us every day. Lovely day for it. Oh, but I don't think your tastes are quite particular enough to enter if you, you know, catch my drift. Perhaps you should go play snooker instead. I suppose I should come back entirely covered in rubber. Having so nice to have a way to take people out of commission without killing them. Well, they had very good hearing for old people and did not been sleeping well. And Hansel said to Gretel, Um, Percy, they said you got a caning at school. Yes. Did it hurt very much? No. Are you sure you're going to be alright? Yes. Do you understand why? Why you... what? Well, why you got the caning. Yes. Did you really kick a rubbish bin in Slathy Crowden's face? No, I didn't! Right. Did you kick a rubbish bin? Yes. Did it then go into Lester Crowden's face? I... I didn't see him. I... I didn't see him. He came around the corner. He came around for... He came around the corner. Oh, that's not at all your fault then. Oh, good. I, are you being sarcastic? Yeah, I was being sarcastic. I hate it when you're sarcastic! I know. What the woodcutter did not know was that his parents had overheard the entire conversation. For well, they had very good hearing for old people and had not been sleeping well. And Hansel said to Gretel, I'll soon have a leave to the wood. Oh, I look like an utter perv in this suit. At least I'll fit in among pervs. On the other hand, it ought to protect me against electricity and lightning and things. Couldn't be better, thanks. Ooh, very nice stitching, if I may say so. Yes, my good time. Very chops. Right. Well, I can take his stuff, and then I can walk across the bridge to Lud's home with his credentials, can't I? That's you. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Yeah. Oh, Who's there? Oh, I'd love to chat, but I'm so discombobulated right now. I can't find my magic wand. I mean, I know where it is. It's in the locker, of course. But I can't find my key. And John Cleland and his friends are coming. They do so love my magic wand. Do you think you can help me find my key? I have to tidy, you see. 
Could you bring it to me here? Don't touch anything. It's got to be just so for my guests. Good morning. I found your key. Oh, you're a good egg, you are. That's a big relief. Mr. Cleland does so love my magic wand. All right, off with you. Shoo. Is that her magic wand? I could use that as a sort of unbreakable head knocker. I have a feeling that's not what they use it for, though. Lovely day for it. No, those are the nuts. <laughs> If I want him to bugger off, I bet a nice bottle of scotch would help. Here. I want you to have this. Excuse me. I've been asked to check up on Dr. Faraday. Where's Bobby Hickenbotham? The executive committee don't let just anyone drop by the lab, you know. Why not? Because they might be friends of Dr. F. You know what Dr. F could do with a bucket of motorline and a handful of mechanical bits? No, I don't either. And that's the point, isn't it? He's, uh, <laughs> at the Reform Club. Again. What are you implying? Uh, apparently he feels a bit guilty about Dr. F. You don't know about his, uh, Bonchon? Bobby Hickenbotham is marrying my sister. And I will thank you not to cast any perverted aspersions at his reputation. I have been ordered by the General himself to ask for credentials from the Beautification Committee. Have you got any? 
There you go. Fine. Watch out for anyone chattering away in something that don't sound like English. They're like mad dogs, and they'll give you plague. And keep your mouth shut about penchants, right? Oh, you better take these, in case you do catch plague over there. Not that I would weep. Blood's hole. That's where they're quarantined all the wastrels with plague, isn't it? That's a cheery thought. <laughs> 